Welcome to Hashtag 52 Boundaries. And this week we are talking about first dates and the boundaries we have or may not have. And I'm so delighted to have with me the dating doctor, Kim, Kim Dunlop. And it's just wonderful to see you. And I know we're going to have an amazing conversation because you know this topic inside and out. And I can only talk from personal experience, but you can talk about the experience of many, many people. So this is going to be great. Welcome. Thanks, Angela. It's so I'm so excited to be here and I can't wait to explore this conversation with you. Um, it's a scary topic and it's going to be a fun topic. <laughs> and I'm sure we'll take it into different directions, but really yes. looking forward to it. So we're going to talk about first dates um, because the first dates can happen online. They can happen can happen in person. You know, you can chat. I mean, there are all sorts of different formats, but we're we're going to have a look at general themes that pretty much permeate any kind of format. You know, like how much information do you share? So, yeah. for example, I think we're right already on topic. We are. Um, and I think that probably the biggest thing, Angela, which people have um, going into first dates is really um, a little bit of fear or a bit of doubt. Um, but there's also that excitement as well of turning up to the date and going, oh, my gosh, what is the other person going to look like? What are we going to be speaking about? Um, you know, where is this going to go? And like it's human nature, if you think about it, the whole excitement of first dates is about finding that future partner. Mm -hmm. And I think people are so focused and more determined than ever. Yet what I'm hearing is um, through my experiences is that people are falling short of getting that perfect partner for themselves. So, yeah, I can't wait to dive into that today. Uh <laughs> so the, the question then is, what is an ideal partner and when, what kind of expectations do you go in with? I mean, I know that people, this whole swiping left and swiping right, a lot of people don't even give themselves the opportunity to get to meet somebody and find out what they're like because they they just go for whatever criteria they have in mind. And if they don't, they're not being met, they immediately discard that person. And I have personally experienced that in first dates where I literally had a guy sat down, looked at me and went, nah, this is not working, stood up and walked out. Right, yeah, and that's really tough. I mean, it is because it's kind of like people are not qualifying mm. what it is that they're really wanting within a relationship. And I think the biggest thing that we're not sort of valuing is what is the relationship or what are the conversations that we would like to have with that future partner and like, are we having those conversations with ourselves before we go on these first dates? Um, and I think it's really important to actually really focus on, um, you know, uh, building that confidence, Angela, mm -hmm. you know, like building that confidence. And I think people are looking at, you know, the apps online. And I've done a few exercises with a few clients where we actually scroll through together. And I actually see how people are interacting, um, you know, with, you know, the whole online process. And it's really scary, you know, but if you think about it, um, it's really just um, a physical thing. So it's only one layer. So there's only one layer where you're looking at the physical, uh, but then you're also looking at the words. So if you're someone that's activated by words, it's kind of then putting that connection together going, okay, do I like the style of this guy? Do I like the style of this girl? You know, and it's kind of then going, well, what is my style? So we mm. can break it down into so many different elements from A, looking at our style at first, um, to B, the interests that people are into that match where I am at. So that's mm. the part that I love to kind of delve into uh, with people. And then set the boundaries around, you know, what is acceptable, what isn't, but not from that place of, you know, I'm going to turn myself into the ideal partner for the other person. I'm going to lose completely who I am, or I'm going to set such rigid boundaries that the person can never live up to my expectations. And instead going, you know, like, let's see what happens and let's find out whether we are actually, whether we actually are attracted to each other and do we have similar values and just be a little bit flexible around that and, and know Again, how to, I love that, you know, I love the exp uh, expression, the slow reveal, how yeah. to reveal to each other who who people really are. 
And, and I think that's a really beautiful term. And I really think that that's actually quite pivotal in the dating world. Mm. And I've found that in actually working with men and women, Angela, that is probably one of the key things, which is that balance. And I know you talked about rigid boundaries um, and that's something you've been working on, which I really love. And it's that protection you know, mm. where people are saying no, 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 or they're not trusting. So they need that safety. But what they're realize, not realising is that they're actually um, setting themselves up to fail and actually not connect with someone. So, mm. you know, I know you've talked about sort of soft boundaries and being too open um, mm. and really sharing your whole life story or your all your exes and stuff, um, which is not ideal like on the first date as well because the first date is supposed to be fun, you know. Yeah. It's, you're supposed to have so much fun and just be playful and dancing around or, you know, be in that really playful, you know, with expression of arms or, you know, excitement. You can see the excitement in yeah. someone's body, you know. Yeah. Um and- and have the curiosity to find out about the other person rather than, you know, and, and it's not an interrogation because some people literally go through, you know, the interview process and, you know, these are the questions I'm going to tick off in order to find out about you, but have that, have that flow to the conversation. Yeah. And a lot of people, you know, I mean, I have literally, and I, again, I can only talk about my own experience. I have been on dates where the guy said afterwards, well, you are such a fabulous listener. And I knew his life story, but he didn't ask me any questions at all. And when there's a flow and it goes back and forth and there's a question and there's curiosity, that's a wonderful feeling. And do you know what? I love that you share that because that comes back to your boundaries. And I know even looking at your flexible boundaries, Angela, which is looking at self and going, okay, so in that situation, um, you know, he wasn't able to look at second person, which was you in this in this first date and actually asked that and potentially could have been a bit nervous as well. Um, and because you're someone that's so articulate, Angela, and who's able to hold a conversation, other people get nervous and go, oh, my God, what am I going to ask her? And a lot of people have lost the art of having a conversation. Like I, I really um, believe that people don't even know how how to explore or say, you know, what what have you got up to or expand a conversation? I always yeah. love to say to my clients, how are you expanding this relationship? Mm. You know, how are you expanding it? Okay, great. You got some negative feedback or you got some positive feedback. Let's work on both of them and going, mm. how do we expand the positive feedback? How do we expand the negative? So in that instant, Angela, I would say to you, it would be, you know, um, in a beautiful way to actually share going, look, I would actually love to share a little bit about me. Mm-hmm. And so you're kind of not putting um, that person on the spot saying, oh, you didn't ask me that question, you yeah. know, um, because they could be a bit nervous in the face of you and going, oh, my God, this girl, you know, this lady is so, you know, confident. She knows how to ask questions. You know, she loves, you know, she dresses up, she wears lipstick. It's all these physical and you know, everything that we're bringing, this energy that we're bringing, Angela, that can sometimes be a bit overwhelming. Um, yeah. So and I don't feel like any boundaries are right or wrong. It's just more about how we flow in those boundaries, you know? Absolutely, yeah. And the boundaries are also, for me, There, there's an aspect of what kind of limitations do I, you know, like aspects of another person do I accept as stereotype Um this is this is what I think this person is like when I hear the facts about them, you know, whatever that may be, divorce, children, no children, you know, this kind of job, you know, all of these things. And they come together as an image in people's heads or as a construct. And then they start acting through those. And you don't really get to know a person through the external factors necessarily. So I, I don't know. I mean, sometimes it's a really good, useful idea to not say what you do and who you are and all of that, but just say, let's just talk about something that has absolutely nothing to do with our data, our personal facts, but just yeah. ask questions, you know, like, f- for example, you know, what's your favorite holiday? You know, what do you like eating? You know, like stuff about, you know, about people, about each other that is not determining the external, what do I call that? Well, I would say what I feel like you're heading towards is 
it's not what you do, it's who you are. Thank and you. like it's getting to those beautiful, you know, gifts that we all bring and, yeah. you know, the qualities. And so it's really understanding the qualities of the person. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you think about, say, a quality that you would apply to yourself, um, you know, it would be kindness and giving and caring. And so even holding a conversation in a first date, you're giving and caring and are actually generally interested in this other person and getting to know them. Yeah. Yet they haven't been necessarily taught that skill. And so these are the beautiful parts which we can then look at expanding and not necessarily rule out that date. Mm -hmm. And I always say this to people, don't rule it out. Let's see, you know, yeah. where we could take this further because a part of us is actually not bringing that self-acknowledgement about ourselves, Yeah. Um, you know, and that beautiful gift But we kind of are giving to others, but we're not, we're forgetting about the best relationship, which is giving to ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so for me, it's really um, for what, what, what I think what I'm hearing is again, it's a first date. Don't treat it like the last date. Yeah. See it as a beginning of something rather than a shopping list or an interview. As you said, be playful about it and, and be, make sure that you talk about stuff that is really authentically you that doesn't transform you into somebody you're not. So then you have to live up to a persona that you can never maintain. Like, you know, like people tell you what kind of expectations they have about their partner and then people shape shift into that. And then yeah. it doesn't work. The second date is then the last date yeah, or the third. Exactly. And do you know what I think the biggest thing is, Angela, is we put so much pressure on ourselves with that first date mm. that we're wanting an outcome. Yeah. And what we're forgetting is actually to sit in the process and actually really enjoy it and actually bring our playful self yep. um, because we are actually yearning for that, you know, that love or that, you know, that companionship or that relationship. And it looks very different for everyone um, that it's actually getting clear on what it is that you're wanting as well. So bringing that forward and exploring that with someone, but maybe at the second or third date, if you know that there's a connection, because mm -hmm. it's really finding that, that connection yeah. and really finding that conversation. And I think it starts with that conversation um, is like what you said before, who are they? You know, mm -hmm. finding out really who they are, taking the label of who they are away from them, which mm -hmm. is their identity. So, yes, they might be a banker or they could be a teacher or, or a bus driver or a solicitor. Um, but that's what we do each day, which is very task driven. And so I yeah. think we just get caught up in that whole like, oh, my gosh, we've got to get this outcome. I've got to get this partner. You know, this is really what I want. Yeah. Um, but we forget to have fun and be playful. And I've done it as well. And so I, I fully am compassionate to people. Because, um, you know, I get caught up and going, oh, I hope this is, you know, the one person for me, you know, when I was <laughs> dating as well. I was. And it's and it's just being honest with yourself as well. I think mm. that's the real um, essence of um, dating is yeah. acknowledging those little wins as well and acknowledging those gifts. Mm -hmm. And I think if we can acknowledge like, just I had a really great time, you know, um, you know, on that date. Um, I really enjoyed the conversation, you know, whilst um, the other person didn't ask me as many questions. Uh, that's a really good skill that I have. So maybe I can see on the next one that they might not be as nervous, you know. Yes. Again, it's 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 for me, it's the Sometimes people come in with such high expectations that one day determines the rest of your life, basically. Is this person marriage material or long term? You can't decide that in the first meeting. I mean, I know that people talk about attraction, you know, and then that you have to have that chemistry right away. But sometimes, you know, you develop that chemistry over time. But my my sense is that we've just gotten into this whole shopping mentality now so if there's if it doesn't click immediately people get people go no okay that's it I'm I'm done yeah um I agree with you I feel like there is that shopping list Angela and I feel like people are so caught up um in the thinking process they're actually not feeling and I love the word chemistry 
mm-hmm. because I look at chemistry as a state of being. And so I kind of say to people, okay, have you had a stressful day? Um, are you turning up on this date? Let's do a check-in. And one of the things in your flexible boundaries is really doing that self-check-in. Mm. And so I love that, you know, creating those flexible boundaries where it's going, okay, can I change my state today to mm. actually turn up to this, you know, wonderful date? Because this person is turning up for me um, yeah. and I'm hoping that they're going to be present and available and yeah. so these are kind of the key things to look for is being present and available. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes on first dates, Angela, some people I've, I've, I've worked with have said, you know, people's eyes are looking everywhere and, you know, they're kind of looking around. And part of them is showing to the other person that they're potentially not present mm-hmm. or they've either had a tough day at work and shouldn't have really turned up. Yeah. So it's really kind of checking in with ourselves going, how are we turning up? Are we you know, turning up in the state that we would like to turn up? Is it this fun, playful, or am I a bit frustrated from today and I'm and I'm going to take my frustrations out on this date? <laughs> you know, like, because it does happen and people are doing that, you oh, know. Yeah. Um, downloading, you know, I've had such a terrible day and then downloading for the next 15 minutes and it's like, okay, that's a great introduction into your day, but not really into you. Yeah. But um, yes, so that's that's the thing that what we that just reminded me of another boundary that people often are not really aware of and that's the what kind of format does the date have what are you consenting to what are you agreeing to it's like i mean do you want to go do you really want to go out with somebody for dinner that you hardly know so where you're you know like i would i would always say start start easy have a coffee i agree or a drink or something so, yeah. you know, if things go really, really badly, so you're not stuck, yeah. but commit to being there at the same time, as you said, be present, show up, and then then have the intention of being really with that person. But again, build the flexibility into it so that you can decide how you want this to progress. Yeah. And I love that because having the coffee, Angela, is actually already setting those boundaries yeah. because then there's this possibility and this excitement and this fun that builds up where you could go to a drink for the second date and go to dinner for the third date. And I actually really suggest that. Um, And whilst, you know, some people, you know, and particularly guys um, that I've worked with have liked to suggest going out for dinner with a lady because it's something that they've been accustomed Mm -hmm. to. But it's them getting back into the rhythm or the balance of, you know, being able to create these boundaries Um, because people have lost a bit of trust. And so it's building that trust and that connection and really seeing someone who is actually committed um, Mm. and being present and not looking around and going, oh, you know, checking out other people at the date, you know, or at the place, you know, or, yes, being on the phone. I mean, like... There is people that are kind of choosing that in the moment. And I find that very interesting when people share that with me who Mm -hmm. have had those experiences. And it's us then also looking at our boundaries and sharing with that person, um, look, is that something that you could put your phone away? Because I'd really like to actually talk with you and and converse with you. Um, but if then you get an understanding of their boundaries as well, Angela. Mm-hmm. So then if they turn around and say, oh, no, I actually want to leave my phone here on the table, <laughs> um, I'm just waiting on, you know, um, yeah. something, you kind of, you know, then go, okay, I could try it out the next date and then mm-hmm. see if they still do the same thing. Yeah. And because it comes down to what we're valuing as well in the time, which is our time and our energy and what we're giving to someone. Um, so, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's about saying, you know, like, let me put it this way. A lot of the times people have have chats before they actually meet. So yeah. they either chat on the phone or they actually have a FaceTime or, you know, they chat. So there's there's that expectation because we get to know people online so much more quickly. You know, we can check out people's Facebook um, page, we can go into their LinkedIn account and we can get all of that data and we can come in with all that that notion that we already have a pretty good idea of, the, of what this person is like. And then it's quite easy to go, I already know you, let's progress this really quickly, right? Yeah, and it is that notion. And I feel that there's that um, 
there is that notion to actually progress it quickly. But yet, Angela, the biggest thing is, which I can say quite confidently, we actually don't know that person. Exactly. We think that we know them. And I knew you would agree with me in sharing that piece because it actually takes such a long time to get to know someone's mannerisms, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and it could be even like, you know, someone having a coffee. They might always have a little cake with their coffee or, you know, the type of coffee. So, you know, what we yeah. started off talking about, it's kind of then knowing that and getting to know that. And then the next time if you meet, they go, oh, Angela, you know, I remember you having a cappuccino. Would you mm-hmm. like you know the same thing so then that other connection that's coming into place that they notice something they're noticing me they're noticing those little things um or then when you go for a a drink you might want to be in a more quieter bar where Mm -hmm. you might want to be private so it could be creating those boundaries where you want privacy as opposed to being in an open bar where it's Mm -hmm. loud and noisy Yep. But it's connecting with that person to go, are they similar or are they different? You know, yeah. and so I love doing that and working with people on that to go, okay, so what is it you like about that? You know, what is it you don't like about it? <laughs> That's the fun part. <laughs> Absolutely. The, so what I'm hearing you say, Kim, is, is that the first date is not even the start. It's just a teaser. You know, it really start. everything starts after the first date. Yeah. And, and so it's so important to, as you said, to set the expectations, to set the scenario, you know, where do you want to meet? How long do you want to meet for? And then what do you want to talk about? Yes. Oh. And and I think the other big thing, which I really love with you saying that, um, is setting those boundaries. Like it's really, really important. And the thing is, you can then step into your flexible boundaries, Angela, because mm-hmm. you can set those boundaries. And if the date's going really well, once you've set these initial boundaries with time and place, mm. you could then graduate, say, from a coffee to a lunch yeah. because you could have had two coffees and then it could go to a lunch. Yeah. And that's based on you then feeling comfortable and checking in with yourself and going, okay, this seems like it's going quite well and the conversation's flowing, Mm -hmm. we can then go to, you know, exploring it a bit further. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's the exciting part about it. Um, But one thing I did want to touch on is the biggest thing um, that I think is really coming up in first dates and dating is people discounting others, maybe because of uh, their physical appearance yeah. Uh, and not actually necessarily with who they are. Mm. And so it's really getting to know the person and who they are. And so that's a, a real big thing that I talk to my clients about, which is, you know, trying to get, um, and I know it's a, it's a tough one to express, but I'm hoping that the audience would be able to understand this is kind of getting yourself out of the way. And mm-hmm. whilst you might value someone's image, it's kind of then going, what are the other qualities that are really important to you and your emotional needs? And is this person someone that's going to meet your emotional needs as Mm -hmm. well as your physical needs? So it's going then a little bit deeper, but it's kind of not dismissing that first date. And I think that's probably the point that I'm trying to make um, is we can do all the research and the data and check out all the photos and that, but then when you meet someone in the physical appearance that they might not necessarily be, you know, meeting those expectations or bringing that chemistry that, you know, that word. And I love that word because I sort of say to people, okay, so what chemistry were you bringing in order to connect in? And what is it that you're showing up, which comes back to your beautiful gifts And so I know one of my gifts are, Angela, is, you know, creating a fun space and a social connection and, you know, talking about things that are really fun. So Mm -hmm. going out on a date, I would share with people who I'm either coaching or working with and saying, so what are the conversations? Are you being a little bit flirtatious, you know, by and the flirtatious boundaries, Angela, could be as simple as, oh, I love your dotted dress that you've got on today, Angela. And that neckline really complements your neck. Like it could be as simple and beautiful as that that's being directed to you as being a little bit flirty. And you go, oh, someone's just commented on my dress. 
And yeah. um, and that's a sense of like, oh, they've acknowledged me. So there's that acknowledgement again of self. Um, and so it's us acknowledging ourselves as well as noticing others acknowledging us. Yeah. You know what I just realized? We've yeah. had, uh, no, not we, but I have had this whole presupposition that first dates are people who have met online or they have met through some sort of agency, like, you know, maybe maybe even, even a, a dating agency or whatever it might be. When people meet for a first date who have met in real life, let's say in a supermarket, in a bar, at a wedding, you know, where we would traditionally have met before there was internet and there were dating apps, dates would have, first dates would have gone slightly differently to the, I know all about you already. We've already talked, you know, for hours before we've, we've actually been in real life together. And it the scenario is the conditions are very different and the expectations. Because if you meet somebody through friends, if somebody sets you up for a blind date, yeah. for example, right? Yeah. And it yeah. comes from a friend who knows you really well. You're going to go into that that date very differently than when you go, oh, okay, I've met them online. Let's see how this goes. Yeah. And what do you think that is? Because I think there's also an energy with that. Um, people have this um, judgment of online that it is different to mm -hmm. actually meeting someone in person. But what I say to people is, how are you preparing yourself for the shopping centre? How are you preparing yourself for online? And and if you're stepping into that and really highlighting and acknowledging that, and so I say to sometimes to some clients, are you wearing your Ugg boots up to the shopping centre? Because you could potentially meet your future partner and create a first date and it could be in around the bananas or the apples or wherever at the supermarket and you could be just wandering around and someone could just strike up a conversation. Mm. Um, but, yes, there is different expectations, I agree, because one of them is you're not necessarily prepared and so that's why I'm wearing the Ugg boots. You know what? Um could be a good thing as well. Could I be was a good thing. To say, <laughs> what if I live in my Ugg boots and I go to the supermarket and I wear high heel shoes, but <laughs> in real life I would never wear them. It's just to <laughs> present myself to a potential mate. Then that would already set up false expectations because quite honestly, I'm more the Ugg boot than the high heel stuff. <laughs> and, and that's where it's perfect, Angela, because I've even told, um, talked about this story um, and that I personally went on a date one time and I wore high heels and it was actually out for a drink. And um, the other guy that turned up, he was actually wearing thongs. And so it was really interesting because what I noticed is he would have liked another date and he asked me, Kim, can I have another date? But for me, it was really important that someone was actually wearing not thongs but you know, more appropriate shoes because this bar was actually quite a nice bar. And I mm. can understand if we were going to the beach, but mm. we weren't going to the beach. So it was kind of a little bit environmental and it was something that I value as well. <laughs> um, and so I share that with people and I go, there's nothing wrong with the thongs. It's yeah. just that he didn't match what I was, um, you know, valuing. And this yeah. is the part and which is what we're valuing about yeah things within ourselves and sharing that. And I think that's another great thing for the first dates as well, Angela, but not sharing too much, as you say, because I think it's really important to keep a little bit of the mystery because mm. people have got all this data, but just sharing little bits, um, you know, about the things that you like to do, you mm -hmm. know. Um, it could be your adventures, you know. It could be you know, um, little things, you know, um, it's just really just sharing parts of us yeah. because uh, there's so many parts to us. Oh, yeah. Again, the slow reveal. You don't have to tell somebody your life history in the first five minutes or, you know, what's going on in your life right now or the the whole exes or how many exes you've had and which one was the most terrible one and what you've learned from that and what you're still digesting and all of that. It's 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 going in there slowly. And that takes me to my next point because we haven't touched on that. Sometimes people, you know, there's this whole thing of where does a first date end? Where does it end with regards to physical touch, for example? Do you have to actually 
you know, there's this whole myth out there that a first date always has to end up with a kiss. If it doesn't, then you failed. You know, the person is not interested. And then there's this, oh, this is going so well. I'm going to spend the night with them, which is the the other extreme, you know, like either holding back completely or going all out. And what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, and I think it becomes a bit disheartening when people hear that, you know, thinking, you know, oh, if I didn't get a kiss, you know, that, you know, there's nothing more to it. We start to build these belief systems, Angela, that are actually not true. It's Funny more what? about right. It's a lot of yeah, hundred percent. Um, and what I suggest to people is, how would you like the date to go? Mm. And it's a really pointed question, but also, um, you know, a question to say, how would you like the date to go? And I know for me personally. I could never kiss a guy on the lips. Um, I would have to kiss him on the cheek, you know, um, because it's something that you want to build up to. Mm. And so I, if anything, if they were to go give me a kiss, I would kind of create my boundaries by putting my cheek, you yeah. know, um, to actually say it's been a lovely day. Or I would step in and actually initiate that, you mm. know, um, if I wanted to, to say I really enjoyed this day. Um, and I think it's up to us you know, how we're feeling. And I probably that's probably the biggest key thing is what are you feeling in the moment? And yeah. some people might want to take it a little bit further and feel more comfortable taking it a bit further. And that's there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Um, you know, it's all all of us do it in our own time. And yeah. look, you might feel that physical connection or that chemistry and it could be quite, you know, sparked, but it could be just only the physical part and you haven't got to the emotional or you know, the mental aspects, you know, um, what are the drivers that drives that person, you know, um, mm -hmm. you know, what are, what are their aspirations? What do they love doing? You know, what makes them get out of bed, you know, each morning, um, you know, are they a beach person or are they a skiing person? Like there's so many things that we can explore, um, Absolutely. with someone, but I think, um, the physical touch one, it's, um, it's really, um, depends on that person and what you're feeling yeah. um, and how you're feeling safe. Because if you look at your ridge of boundaries, um, you might not be feeling safe and you need more words in order yeah. to trust that person or you might need to see more. And so that could mean another date. And so someone sitting in the ridge of boundaries could then open that up a little bit and become a bit more flexible, mm -hmm. um, you know, by seeing and, you know, um, and trying on something a little bit different next time, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah so and, that's and the somebody who, And somebody who's got really soft boundaries and goes in with, well, I'm going all out here and I'm going to see how it goes. And, you know, whatever happens is great. And they're just going with the flow so much that they lose all agency you know like they they just they just don't know what's going to happen next they're just going to go with whatever the other person wants that's the opposite so it's the flexibility we're back to flexible boundaries see how you go with that person do you feel safe do you feel that you're building trust do you feel that you have a values alignment on some level without having gone straight down the road of what do we want from this relationship immediately but in a in a, in a way you know like being able to create some sort of platform from which you can take it 100%. rather than how are we swimming how are we going to go are we drowning or do we need to stay off you know and do we not go into the water at all and and I think the beautiful opportunity is with what you touched on with the soft boundaries is they could try on something different by actually holding back exactly um, and creating that mystery yep. and so I think there's so much opportunities with the ones that are being closed or being rigid to mm -hmm. opening up a little bit um, to the soft boundaries being so open to actually holding back a little bit and, you know, practicing that. And I think the more that we practice the observation of ourselves mm -hmm. in those dating environments, we get these learnt experiences and we can actually reflect. And I think that's a really big piece mm -hmm. um, for the first dates is try and reflect on how you turned up, were you in a yeah. happy state, you know, or had you had a stressful day? Could you have picked another day? You mm -hmm. know, and this is, comes back to your beautiful, flexible boundaries, Angela, you know, checking in with self first and going, is tonight yeah. the right night for me, you know? Yeah. 
And when you're really clear, then it's really easy. But we haven't talked about that. Then there's the spongy boundaries where people vacillate between super intense and ghosting. You know, like they agree to certain things. Like we're going to have a date. I'm not really in the space for this, but you want me to show up. So I'll say yes. And then I don't show up. Yeah. Right. And and I would say to that is they're kind of a little bit confused. <laughs> yeah, I would and, say so. And, and I would say that they're potentially unavailable as well, yeah. emotionally and physically. But yeah. I I feel it comes back to that other conversation we're talking about. We're wanting everything so fast. And it's like people think that it's like walking into a supermarket and opening up the fridge and buying the milk. I want the partner. And so on the first date, I'm I'm going to open up the fridge and this is what I want um, yeah. is this, you know, beautifully, you know, silky milk. Um, this is exactly what I want. But what people are missing is before you open up the fridge, it's around going, okay, what are the questions that we're asking ourselves? Mm-hmm. You know, what's the type of healthy relationship that I would like to be in? Mm-hmm. You know, you know, are these the healthy conversation? Am I being nice to myself? What am I acknowledging about myself? You know, what are the boundaries that I'm wanting to create? Having yeah. these conversations, I think, are so key um before we even go on this first date and and if you can have it with a girlfriend that's better mm-hmm. even having over a glass of wine or even the men as well having a beer um you know to talk about this let's nut yeah. it out work yeah. out the strategy um because i think it's really useful what you're mm-hmm. sharing well self-awareness is the key and the and i think and the willingness to communicate and get past the awkwardness that might there might be there and the expectations and and all of these things that we think we should do and that we shouldn't be doing and we fall into stereotypes and into beliefs that have been created by society and by you know and when we really show up as people everything is possible 100 percent. and do you know what i think the biggest thing is angela and i actually use this term a lot now is jumping into love mm-hmm. rather than judgment mm-hmm. and when i say love it's jumping into love for ourselves. Yeah. Going, this is something that we really want, you know, yeah. and I really want this, you know, I really want to have a partner. So it's jumping into love and us not judging ourselves yeah. and thinking it's going to go, you know, bad or, you know. Yeah. And of course, remembering to you decide how quickly you want to jump, right? It's not the other person says jump now, but it's like you decide how, how quickly you want to jump. That would be okay. mine. Exactly. And I think that comes back to, um, you know, the slow reveal. Mm-hmm. Um, exactly. And, and which I think comes into this balance, you know, and just having that balance of the the soft and then the rigid, but the spongy, but then looking at that and really designing your own beautiful strategy, but then working out how that's showing up for you. Mm -hmm. Um, because I feel like people are not really supporting themselves. They want this outcome Mm -hmm. and, you know, people are so determined and, you know, are on the apps and, you know, more focused than ever, Angela. Like I've really noticed that, that people are really focused, yet we keep on missing the beautiful relationship with ourselves. Like Mm -hmm. um, are we being nice to ourselves today or are we putting ourselves down? Is that jumping into love or is that jumping into judgment? You know, um, and it's coming from fullness rather than emptiness. So, yeah, percent, yeah, hundred percent. Well, I know we could talk about this for many hours, and I know we will. And I'm, you know, encouraging everybody who wants to go on first dates, talk to Kim about that. <laughs> and if you've got any limiting beliefs around that, you might talk to me about it. But in any case, go on first dates, have some fun, be playful, yeah. Yeah. and so. That's we again. This is a thought starter. This is an idea for you to have a look at what are your patterns around first dates, what are your expectations, and what are your boundaries, first and foremost. Thank you so much, Kim. This been has been absolutely wonderful. Yeah, and so beautiful. <laughs> and thank you everybody for watching and listening. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Mm-hmm.